remember it. The uh, uh, Riemann sum at specific point uh, in that uh, height multiplied by the width delta x, which is integral from a to b, f of x dx. Well, now suppose we have rectangular region from uh, a to b, x is changing and c is, uh, b, y is changing from c to d. And then our goal is to find the volume of the solid that lies beneath the surface and above the region R on the XY plane. So what we did is uh, actually, as you have done it before, you have this surface, you have this rectangular region and the height multiplied by the area element will give you the volume element. In other words, you partition that rectangular region to these sub-regions and then you will get uh, <clears throat> the area element multiplied by the height will get the volume. In other words, this one area element multiplied by height and add them up all, you will get the volume under the curve. So your double Riemann sum uh, looks like this one. And uh, then based on that, actually, the double integral over uh, uh, region is uh, integral over rectangular region f of x y dA, the area element equals uh, the sum of this as both m and n are going to infinity f of x sub i uh, y likewise delta a. All right, so. I mean, you can use, for example, this uh, elliptic paraboloid and find the volume within uh, the x interval from 0 to, to the y likewise uh, using uh, four partition. You can pick the left uh, bottom and then calculate the height, or you can pick actually the right top right, and then calculate uh, the uh, height, and then multiplied by the area element, you'll get the volume. You have done this one, and when you do it, actually, this looks like this. This uh, the reason I'm bringing from stored textbook is, since you have done with this one, it is the same concept, so it will flash back. So this approximation, as you see, uh, is underestimating it because all the uh, rectangular blocks are beneath the surface. So we are losing some volume element. So we are underestimating it. This is really very rough estimate, but if we increase the numbers of partition, for example, when both M and N are four, it will be better than the previous one. When we make it both eight, eight by eight, it's 64 is better. And when we make it 16 and even by far better. So as uh, we are increasing the number of partitioning, the approximation uh, is getting better and better, and actually it becomes the <coughs> exact value of the uh, integral over that region. So uh, we can subdivide all this uh, when we are given function, and we can reveal. For example, if somebody is giving me with z is equal to x squared sine of x, y. Well, this region is really very, uh, when you see it, it intimidating, but it's not that bad. You are going to partitioning it into a uh, number of partitions that you are required and you can do it. Well, there are sometimes actually functions like this one to evaluate. Can you uh, actually evaluate this uh, integral? Uh, using Riemann sum. Well, it can be possible, but sometimes geometry also is really better. Uh, what we have is the integral over the region R square root of one minus X squared uh, dA. And now this will be the height and dA, we are going to really subdivide it and plug it here and that is M. Well, to get the exact value, it is impossible. But if we refer to geometry, actually, we might have a good chance. Remember, uh, x is changing between 
negative one and one, and y is changing between negative two and two. Then what happens is, let us see the integrand. That is, z, the height, equals what? Uh, square root of one minus x squared. Okay, if z, the height equals one minus x squared, well, let me really simplify and see it. z squared equals one minus x squared, and z squared plus x squared is equal to one. Ah, actually, this is going to be a circle of radius one. Okay, you have z axis, you have the, this is the y axis, I mean x axis. And now where is y? y is really somewhere free, it can be anything. But y is changing from, this is actually what? A cylinder, you remember when we have one free variable, then it always uh, creates a cylinder. So we are going to have the cylinder. And by the way, I'm sorry, I didn't use the right hand uh, orientation, but I will really draw it and it will be like this. So technically, when we are drawing it, Okay, let's say this is negative two, and this one is two, where y is changing. And as we said, z, uh, x is changing from negative one up to one, and z is also uh, changing. But since this is positive root, we are going to take the upper half. So, So what do we see? We see actually a cylinder having a height from uh, two up to negative two and the radius of one Okay, sorry for my crappy picture, I didn't really calculate it so that's it. this is what we have. So can we find this volume geometrically? Yes. So integral over region square root of actually uh, one minus x squared is going to be one half of the volume of the cylinder. Uh, that means pi r squared h. Well, that is one half pi, the radius is one squared, and the height is actually four. So this is really two pi. So just like we did in the area, we can really find the volume by using uh, that. When we are finding a volume, uh, just like we did, left sum or right sum will have rough sketch. If we make it mid uh, point, that will be a better approximation as well. Uh, you have to pay attention to that as well. And when you put the midpoint, you know how to subdivide it because in your textbook also there is exercise, you can handle that. You subdivide using the N uh, partition uh, in the X direction and partition on the Y direction. And then once you have this partition, the midpoint in the X will be X1 plus X2, this two point divided by two, Y1, plus y2 divided by 2 will give you this point and the same thing likewise and then you can really calculate all right the other thing that we need to know is uh, in double uh, integral the calculating the average value in single variable do you remember the average value the average height in other words if i have a function like this one And if I can make, uh, manage the, get the average height here, F average, 
Then this height, this average height, using this average height and integral from A to B, this area of the rectangle and the area under the curve are equal. So F average equals one over A, uh, one over B minus A, integral from A to B, F for fixed X. Likewise, if we have a solid, if I have a surface, which is really coming this way, and then if I can manage the volume, that means the area element divided by, that will give me actually the average value. F average is equal to one over the area over that rectangular region uh, multiplied by the integral of f of a uh, x y d a all these are and even you can be given conform up and you can uh, really find the average uh, rainfall uh, or <coughs> precipitation or, or uh, snowfall or anything and you have done all that <coughs> so i'm not going to spend the time well, one thing that I want you to really remember is the linearity uh, property of integral and the constant multiple of uh, integral. That means double. Okay, one is the integral of f of x, uh, f of x y plus g of x y dA will be separately integrate and add those uh, integral values. And if you have constant function, take out that constant and evaluate the integral and the value will be the same or preserved and the third one if f of x y is greater than or equal to g of x y for all x on that region then of course the integral of f of x y uh, da uh, over that region is greater than the uh, integral of g of x y over the same region these are the properties well, these are just how the formula derived and introduced and so on. So that is really the boring part and we are not going to deal with that. But now what we are going to focus is with iterated integral. When you have really integral, well, can you find the iterated in integral uh, of uh, the given function? Uh, well, do you remember the first fundamental theorem of calculus? Uh, that is the evaluation theorem. If small f of x has the antiderivative capital F of x, uh, and if you integrate that small f of x from a to b dx, it's a number whose value is going to be capital F of f, uh, f of b minus capital F of a, where f, uh, capital F is the antiderivative. <coughs> so this concept uh, also will be actually transfer to uh, multiple integrals and so when you are integrating with respect to x and then with respect to y we call it iterated integral and the notation is integral from a to b of a of x dx integral from a to b integral from c to d of dy dx and by the way this has to be also this both two combined and it will give us usually we write it like this one integral from a to b integral from c to d f of x y dy dx what that means is first you integrate inside that's why we put it in parentheses, and then you integrate outside and similarly uh, you can really change the order the integral from a to b uh, of f of x y dx and uh, from c to d dy that is really what you have to uh, really pay attention always uh, in rectangular coordinate system we give you in the form of matrices and a b that is x value followed by c d that is a y value and then you will determine the limit of integration and you can really evaluate that integral. All right, so uh, 
why not we evaluate this integral? I am sorry, I bore you so much because it is known that I have to start somewhere, that's why. So evaluate these two integrals. In other words, the order are changed and do we get the same results? That's what it means. Oh, I'm sorry, you cannot, you cannot even read it. <coughs> Evaluate the two iterated integrals and give me the value. Type it on chat. So just like partial derivative, in this case, we are differentiating first with respect to y. x uh, uh, is constant, so you have x squared and y squared over two, and that is evaluated from one up to two, and still the outer integral is going to be kept, and then you have dx. So by the <coughs> Evaluation theorem, this is going to be two squared, which is uh, four. Four over two is two. And then uh, one square is one, and one over two we have integrated with respect to x. All right. So you have three halves, that is constant. Of course, this is going to be one over two x cubed integral from zero to three. And that is 27 over two. And on the other hand, uh, the second version uh, integral from one up to two integral from zero up to three x squared y dx dy. This time, y is constant, and by the way, 1 and 2, upper limit will be kept, and I will keep y, and when you integrate this one, it is one third x cubed, evaluated from 0 to 3, and that is integrated with respect to uh, y. Okay, <coughs> so, when we put this one, 27, uh, uh, actually, divided uh, by 3, that is going to be 9. Because when I put 0, it is 0. Okay, this is going to give us 9 over 2, y squared evaluated from 1 uh, up to 2. So y squared is obviously uh, <coughs> four and one squared is one, okay. Nine times three over two, which is equal to 27 uh, over two. And in both cases, you'll get the same. All right, that is really quick and we have done this. All right, now this will lead us actually what? To the Fubin's theorem. Fubin's theorem, if F is continuous on the rectangular region R, which has the ordered pair X, Y. X is changing from A to B, and Y is changing from C to D. Integral over rectangular region F of X, B, A. Either you can do it this 
y or this way. In other words, integrate with respect to y and then with x and or integrate with respect to x and then with respect to y. The result will be the same. The only thing that you have to remember is the internal variable of integration has to match with the internal limit of integration. The external variable of integration has to match with the external limit of integration. As long as we change, that's it. More generally, this is true if we assume that f is bounded on R, f is discontinuous only on a finite number of smooth curve. If it is discontinuous in a finite number, we can really partition and add because linearity property of integral will give us. And if the iterated integral also exists, in other words, unless otherwise it is improper integral. That is what it means. All right. So the concept you understand it, the Fubin theorem, why it is true. If you integrate it with respect to actually x by stacking up like this one, uh, having a thickness of it, and then later on integrate with respect to y, add them up, or with integrating with respect to y, delta y is changing here, and then add them up, uh, you will get the same result. All right. Well, uh, reversing the order of integration is not really that easy. Okay, I want to integrate this integral as it is, and then also reverse the order. And what happened? Let us see. Integral from 1 up to 2, that is x changing, and y is changing from 0 up to 1, x squared plus y, dy dx. Please do that. We need this one actually so many times from now on or this. Uh, so if we do it with rectangular region, we can do it with general region as well. So please work on that. By the way, this is really recent memory, guys. Me moving fast, is it that bad? Hello, guys. Can you hear me? Am I moving too fast or you are familiar with and it's okay? Mm, this has been familiar from 163 so yeah. far. I know. Okay. Thank you. But this will be instrumental when we are dealing with actually vector field integral, line integral, surface integral, and so on. That is why. We are really focusing on this.
Okay, well, when we do it one way, this is going to be actually integral from one up to two, and integral from zero up to one, x squared y plus one half y squared, and evaluated from zero up to one, and dx. And this will give me <coughs> very simple uh, value well x squared i have here and from that i subtract x squared plus uh, times one and plus one half times uh, one squared and then i will subtract when i put uh, actually zero for y this is going to be zero times x squared is zero and here zero squared is zero and evaluated from uh, one up to two dx and that is x squared plus one half uh, and that is integrated from one up to two uh, dx all right so this is going to be x cubed over 3 plus 1 half x and evaluated from 1 up to 2 and 2 cubed is 8 8 over 3 and plus 1 and then minus uh, 1 over 3 plus 1 half all right, so three plus uh, one uh, is three times one is three plus uh, eight is uh, actually 11 minus five over six. And that is actually 22 minus five over six. That is 17 over six. Like this. Okay. Well, this is really very simple and straightforward. But when we do it the other way, uh, you might see it. Uh, it will be a little bit time consuming. It's not really that challenging. But uh, what I say is really time consuming. And let us uh, see what is really happening. So why I'm highlighting is from moving forward, when we are picking the integral, especially whether it is rectangular or general region, we'll see it later, and you'll see which one is really better. Okay, so now, since this is a rectangular region, the only thing that I have to do is, I will switch from zero to one, and from one up to two, and the function remains as it is, is but the limit of integration will be switch x will go with x and this will be dy 
And then when we integrate, huh, yeah, no wonder actually we don't see it. I didn't pay attention. Okay. So this integral is going to be what? Integral from zero to one. And now we are going to integrate with respect to x, one third x cubed plus uh, y times x. And that is valued from one up to two and I have dy. And then now, what is really happening? Well, this is 8 over 3. When I put uh, actuary x, and then plus, when I put 2, 2y, and then minus 1 over 3, Uh, minus y, uh, plus y. And this is going to be integral from 0 to 1. From uh, 8 over 3, you subtract 1 over 3, that is going to be 7 over 3. And from 2y, you subtract y, which is y. And you are going to integrate with respect to y. All right, and this is going to be <clears throat> seven over three y plus one half y squared evaluated from zero up to one. And then we evaluate it. And when you evaluate this one, it is obviously uh, seven over three plus one half. And the least common denominator is going to be, you will get the same result. So. It is uh, a matter of preference when you have actually the lower limit is not really uh, zero. It might have some expression, it will be expanded. Here, it's relati relatively easy. It's not that complicated, but when you solve some complicated problems, uh, you have to really pay attention to those. All right. Uh, in this case, since the function within the given region is above the x-axis or a great deal of it, so we can really assume that it can be a volume. But double integral, just like any integral, it is not really volume. It is a net change. If it is uh, the whole, the entire surface is above the xy plane, yes, it is going to be volume. Otherwise, it is a net change. Okay, what do I mean by that? <clears throat> For example, if I give you this function within the region, and I'm not going to ask you to do it because it is boring, you can't do it. Okay. Uh, so when you integrate this uh, in different order, you get negative 12 uh, from zero to two, from one to two. And if I switch the order again, I will get the same. So what does this mean, this negative value? In other words, the surface is below the x-axis, x-y plane. And that is what we are going to really get. OK, well, since we are practicing uh, actually uh, iterated integral, why not you do this? When we see trigonometry, I don't want you to freak out, OK? So the region, the x is changing from one up to two, and the y is changing from zero to pi. And I want you to integrate within this rectangular region, uh, the function y times sine of x, y, dA.
Okay, I'm going to really put this one, and then I have y sine of x, y, and shall I integrate it with respect to y or x first, and what is your justification? If you integrate with respect to x first, uh, mm -hmm. why is things a bit because we mm -hmm. can just use substitution thank you that is great yeah so because the x value is this so from one up to two and from zero up to pi the reason i'm giving you is you remember the first uh, at the very beginning i told you okay when you have zero the lower limit actually your uh, work will be cut into half because you don't have to add and the less term will be happening well that is not the case all the time because you have here trigonometry and you can use u substitution and you can really find the antiderivative. Yes, if u is equal to uh, x times y uh, and uh, uh, du is going to be y dx, then as a result, we are going to have integral from zero to pi. And that function, the antiderivative of cosine is negative sine. I'm the, the antiderivative of sine is negative cosine of xy. And evaluated from one up to two, dy we have. And this is really very simple. We can really evaluate it. And this will give me negative cosine of two uh, y plus cosine of y and dy. And this is really simple. Again, by using your substitution, this is negative one half sine of two y. And the antiderivative of this one is simply sine y. And evaluated from zero to pi. Of course, sine of uh, pi, uh, the two pi is zero. And sine of pi is zero, sine of zero is zero. This is zero. All right, but now why not we do it the other way around? I mean, by uh, writing it like this. Okay, uh, for sure we will get the same answer, but why not you do it and see what is really happening. By the way, the integral is zero. What does this mean, guys? equal portions of the curve above and below the xy plane yes thank you that is the concept that we have to do when we are talking about vector flow of mm -hmm. uh, and so on if we get what is it the incoming and outgoing are the same that is what we are going to talk about later <clears throat> in chapters Okay, guys, what will be your x then? What shall I do to integrate this one? 
Is it manageable to integrate it or not at all? Remember in the previous case, we use new substitution. What about this one now? Y sine of xy, and we are going to integrate with respect to y, and then dx. So forget the outer, just let us deal with this. Integral from zero to pi, y sine of xy dy. And then we'll plug it anyways. So what shall I do, guys? What technique shall I use? What do you have here? Power function, yes? Y. And here you have trigonometric function. So when you have this kind, what do you do? We integrate by parts. You remember? And when you are integrating by parts, actually, what will be your choice? Both you and uh, du. Actually, this is the simplest uh, way of him. Liate, do you remember learning this? Logarithm function, inverse function, algebraic function, trigonometric function, and exponential function, moving from left to right. And then your u is going to be the one on the left, and your dv is going to be actually the one on the right. And then you have uh, actually y, that's polynomial algebraic function, and trigonometric is on the uh, right side. Therefore, your u is going to be y, and your dv is going to be sine of xy. Remember uh, doing this, guys? Okay, then du is going to be dy, and this dv, uh, we have to integrate it, and when we integrate, because we are, uh, by the way, dy, I have to add that, we are integrating with respect to y, so this is a coefficient, so we have what? The antiderivative of sine is cosine, x, y, and multiplied by one over the coefficient, which is x. And that is what we have. So this integral is going to be u times v. That means uh, y times cosine of x, y, divided by x. And the negative sign is actually from this one. And minus the integral of v, here I have since minus sign, let me put uh, plus, and then uh, integral of cosine of x, y, x uh, times y. Uh, dy. That is uh, what we have uh, uh, ready uh, to do. And then now we are going to integrate uh, actually this uh, integral. Uh, and then uh, look, I can continue and doing it. And then here you have x and y. You are going to integrate it with respect to y. By the way, one over x is going to be out. By the way, uh, one over x. And you have integral y cosine of x, y, uh, dy. And then this one, again, you will integrate it. You will bring it back over here, and you add it. Then you can really solve it. So why bring this one up? Actually, Fubin's theorem is instrumental. We have to pick and choose the integral that is actually easy for us to overcome. Uh, we don't have to be macho, but we can prove it. And the event, uh, eventually your integral will be, after all this long process, it will be like this one. And when you evaluate it, actually it will be zero. All right, now 
one of the applications, as I said, uh, of finding uh, a double integral is finding the volume. So I want to find the volume. I want to be imaginative and find the volume of this. The solid S that is bounded by the elliptic paraboloid x squared plus y squared, uh, 2y squared plus z is equal to 16. And the plane x is equal to 2, y is equal to 2, and the three coordinate planes. In other words, the xy plane, the yz plane, and the xz plane. So what will be that volume? Go ahead, please. I want to be imaginative what it looks like, and then uh, do it. Okay, this is going to be your really surface. And you are going to draw it. And of course, 16 will be the vertex. And on the uh, YZ plane, uh, X is going to be zero. So 16 minus uh, 2y squared is equal to uh, 0. Uh, <coughs> the, the z value is 0. Then to find the x-intercept. So 8, 2 square root of 2, approximately, it is going to be here. And negative 2 square root of 2 over here. And you are going to have this volume. And likewise, on the xz plane, Then what happened? Uh, the y value is zero. That means uh, 16 is, uh, is equal to x squared. Uh, 16 minus x squared is equal to zero. Uh, four. We are going to have here four. And we are going to have this region. So, and now what is really happening? This is a solid. But out of this solid, what you are asked to find is x is equal to 2, y is also 2, and this planes. So it is a portion of this solid you are going to uh, integrate. So within this region, x is equal to 2, y is equal to so uh, uh, that is what you have. And this is really coming this way. And a portion of it is cut it, and you are going to get that volume. All right. So when you integrate, actually, the surface looks like this one. And your limit of integration already they gave you from your up to two and so on. And uh, since all the surfaces are above the x axis, you are going to get the volume. Uh, uh, XY plane, I'm sorry. And the answer is 48. You can finish it. Thank you. We ran out of time, actually. Tomorrow, we are going to talk about the most interesting one is instead of rectangle, actually, on general region. And from that, then we'll go to triple integral on Monday. Uh, then it will be more exciting, elliptic, uh, I mean, uh, spherical, uh, and cylindrical coordinate system, and the application of double and triple integral will work, and then we'll go to vector field chapter 17. Thank you. Uh, I hope this will help refreshing your memory. And because there are actually lots of integrals that we are going to deal with, so please uh, refresh uh, your memory of technique of integration, such as new substitution, integration by parts, trigonometric integral, trigonometric substitution, uh, partial fraction decomposition, completing the square, 
all these, all right? Because if you know the skill of those in single variable, I mean, in multivariable, you are going to consider the other extra variables as constant and you are technically doing single variable skills. Thank you, I'll see you tomorrow. All right, take care guys. Thank you.